All right, so this is not a normal video, guys. As you can see, the lights are barely on in the background. My energy is nowhere near what it usually would be. I don't have the funny quips and the jokes and the funny lines because this is not a funny video. Um, I'm supposed to be working on a different video that hopefully comes out later for you guys. It's a Tyron Woodley and Jake Paul video. That's something I enjoy. This is not because I'm talking about John Jones. It's all I can think about right now. It's, it's kind of anything else to me really doesn't matter at this moment because I'm so frustrated and disgusted and fed up and, and hurt for the people that are involved here. So I'm just going to let the words come out, and hopefully it makes sense. Hopefully you guys understand just how bad this is. So John Jones, if you guys didn't know, was attending the UFC Hall of Fame this weekend. Should have been one of the biggest moments of his life. And of course, in true John Jones fashion, about five hours after his induction for his fight with Alexander Gustafson, he was arrested and charged with domestic battery and uh, tampering with a vehicle. Now, I don't know too much about the law, but I know... And when you say the words domestic and battery in the same sentence, it's never a good situation. And it always tends to be worse than originally thought. And that's kind of what we're finding out. So John Jones comes back to his hotel room after partying that same night that he was inducted into the Hall of Fame with his buddies in Vegas. And the hotel room, by the way, is holding his kids and his wife who were there. The only reason they were in Vegas was to support John Jones. People were there on behalf of him to support him, to be there for him. So apparently John Jones comes back to the room, and I don't know if there was an argument or, or what happened, but the police report officially says that the fiancé claims that John Jones wasn't too physical with her. Wasn't too physical, just a little bit. That he pulled her hair and that he touched the back of her head. But somehow, a few minutes later, when she comes down to the security office to retrieve a new key for her room... She has a bloody nose, blood on her mouth, blood all over her sweatshirt, and breaks down and starts crying to this security guard with one of the children with her, both of them telling the security guard, please, can you call the police? Not just the fiancé, but the child saying, can you call the police? Can you call the police? And her telling the security guard that she's afraid to go back to her room where her husband or her fiancé and her kids are. She's afraid to go back there because he touched the back of her head and pulled on her hair a bit, that's what happens. Your mouth starts immediately bleeding. Your nose starts bleeding. You have blood all over you when someone just touches the back of your head. And again, I'm not going to be judge, jury, and executioner here because this is going to play out in legal proceedings. But guys, can you put two and two together? Can you understand that this lady who is telling the police it wasn't too physical knows what too physical is? That's how she can determine that it was a little physical compared to that too physical that she's possibly experienced before and that his own children understand when it's time to call the police is this the first time they've seen that i'll let you guys be the judge there but anyway to make matters worse john then decides he's going to grab ten thousand dollars leave his wife and his kids there decide he doesn't want to be a father in that moment even if he made a mistake even if he did something he shouldn't have done he's not going to be a man in that moment and own up to his actions and sit there and take whatever punishment is owed to him because of his actions He's going to take $10,000 and head over to the strip club instead. Enjoy himself a bit after his victory in the hotel room. Fucking scumbag. So the police catch up to John. They detain him. And the first thing that John has to say when he's in cuffs is he's going to file a lawsuit against the police officers for ruining the greatest night of his life. As if John didn't just do that. But that's out of his mind. That doesn't matter. What matters to him is he's being detained. He's being made to pay for his actions because he can't just walk all over anyone and he can't just do whatever he wants with no repercussions John is upset and he's acting like a child a spoiled fucking brat you would think that would be it that John just makes an ass out of himself in front of the police and that's it but then he just rams his head into the police car denting it making paint chips fly everywhere telling the police officers he wants to see what he can do against all of them faking like he's gonna run away from the police all this as some big fun joke to John Jones as if he didn't just do what he did to his fiance in front of his own fucking kids. And the point I'm making this video to tell you guys is that John Jones not only needs to pay his debts to whatever legal process plays out, but he needs to be cut from the UFC. It's time to cut ties with this guy. As much as he is one of the greatest fighters inside that cage, he can't separate that fighter from 
the man, the citizen, the human being that he should be outside of it. Because that's not what a fighter does. I can't stand people saying, oh, it's the fight business. Yeah, it's, it's the fight business when John smacks up his fiance in front of his kids, then grabs 10 G's and heads to the strip club to celebrate. That is a low life feeding an addiction that everyone just throws their hands back and says, yeah, it's okay because he can fight pretty well in a cage. I don't care what John Jones has to say. I saw his stupid ass Instagram message. And again, guys, this isn't me kicking a man while he's down or talking about his religion, but I, I don't have time to hear how much that God's going to save you and that alcohol is in your past and that the demons are on your back when you're your own worst enemy, when you are the demon. You made that choice as a grown man, as a 34-year-old man, to continue to feed those demons. So uh, John Jones' words mean nothing to me, and they shouldn't really mean anything to you at this point. John's actions speak louder than any words he's ever said, any Bible verses he's ever had tattooed on him. I don't care about that shit anymore. Again, it's not me knocking his religion or anything like that, but when you just throw things on an Instagram story and show you benching 225, like, that fucking matters right now. It doesn't mean a damn thing to me. John needs to have some consequences for his actions, and that means being cut out of the one thing that he loves to do that he's very, very good at. Because when John continues to succeed despite all of these failures outside of the cage, if he continues to win inside that cage, the lesson is never learned. Daniel Cormier talked about this on his show yesterday that he felt responsible because he didn't beat John Jones and show him the error of the ways he was living outside of the cage. And that's honorable for DC to say. And if you want to look at a role model, DC is that fucking guy. Wrestling coach, mentor to kids, great father, has never done a wrong thing in this sport besides be there every single time he was called upon. Show people what hard work looks like and continue to live with integrity. John, on the other hand, despite his... his Pure skill and amazing ability inside of that cage has always, always shown his true colors outside of it. Someone that doesn't care about himself, doesn't care about his legacy, doesn't care about the people around him, the people closest to him. When it came down to it and he had a decision to make in a moment, again, of a massive mistake and something that is really, really bad, really bad, he then still decided that it wasn't time to look in the mirror and say, I fucked up here. Instead, he went for 10 G's and decided he was going to go to the strip club. 34 years old, three kids and a fiance. This one's not an eye opener for the UFC, for, for anybody that's around John Jones. For John Jones him fucking self, I don't know what is. When I read that report and it said that John Jones' fiance claimed to the police that he wasn't too physical, just a bit, just a little. It seems as though she knew the right words to say to not get John Jones in too much trouble because as the police stated again in the police report, she said, how long do I have until he's out? How long do I have? The policeman said that she looked quite fearful of John Jones, that she kept asking, when is he getting out of county jail? When is he getting out? How much time do I have? I don't want to know what too physical is, and I have a feeling she's experienced it before. If not, she knows what it could be. And I don't want to find that out. I hope no one has to find that out. And if John is ever going to find a way to, to get over these demons, to get over himself, to find retribution, to be a better person, to be a better human, I'm not here to lecture the guy, but he's got to get help. He has to. This is no longer a thing of if he wants it or not. He has to. And I think that starts with the UFC and, and that organization cutting ties. Because if not... He'll continue doing what he's doing. John needs help, but more so than anything, and this is all I'm concerned about, John's fiance and those kids need help. I hope sincerely that they get it.